Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Today, we'll be taking a detailed look at the new free-to-play craftable four-star sword, the Aminoma Kagayuchi. We'll also be comparing it to a couple more weapons, the Black Cliff Longsword and the Mist Splitter Reforged. We'll be doing this with Ayaka to gain a better understanding of how these weapons perform compared to each other. Let's quickly understand what the Aminoma Kagayuchi does. Starting off, it has 454 base attack and 55.1 attack percent. Its ability, Iwakura Succession, allows you to cast an elemental skill and thus gain a succession seed, as indicated by the spinning black orb around the hilt of the sword. It has a 5 second cooldown for gaining the seeds, and you can gain up to 3 seeds. Gaining a new seed refreshes the duration of the older seeds. Then, after you use your burst, you gain 6 energy per seed for a maximum of 18 energy with 3 seeds at refinement 1. However, at refinement 5, you gain 12 energy per seed for a maximum of 36 energy with 3 seeds. I'll quickly provide my assessment on its passive before moving on to its damage. At refinement 1, its passive admittingly feels a bit underwhelming. Some extra energy is nice, but in most situations, it's difficult to notice 6 to 12 additional energy. However, at refinement 5, gaining 24 or even 36 energy after using your burst feels pretty massive. 36 energy is a ton of energy, and is nearly half of Ayaka's 80 cost energy burst. If you do have plenty of sword billets to spare, refining this sword is worth it. Speaking of which, this is an amazing sword for exploration and domains. Whenever your skill is off cooldown, you can quickly use Ayaka's E. Then, in your next engagement, use your burst to gain back a ton of energy, and chances are you'll have your burst up again for the following engagement. But now let's also talk about the damage that the sword does. And for a better perspective, we will compare it to the Black Cliff and the Mist Splitter. But to do this, we need to first understand all three weapons. The Black Cliff Longsword is a straightforward weapon with 565 base attack and 36.8 crit damage. Its passive won't really be relevant in the testing situations in this video. The Mist Splitter Reforged is a bit more complicated. The Too Long Didn't Read is that at Refinement 1, it gives a flat 12% elemental damage. It has up to 3 stacks, and you can gain a stack if your normal attack deals elemental damage, which lasts 5 seconds. You can gain another stack if you use an elemental burst, and this stack lasts for 10 seconds. And finally, if your energy is less than 100%, this stack lasts indefinitely until your energy is full. To answer your question, on whether or not Ayaka's burst gains the full advantage of the sword? The answer is yes. Using Ayaka's burst will provide her burst with the Mist Splitter's burst stack and energy less than 100% stack. You simply need to use a cryo infused basic attack before using her burst to get all three stacks. But really quick, before I go into the showcase for the weapons, might I ask you to smash the subscribe button? I do put a ton of effort into these guides and would greatly appreciate your support by simply subscribing to my channel. Anyway, now that we understand all the weapons, let's see how much damage they end up doing to our poor volunteer, the Primo Geo Vishap. I selected the Primo Geo Vishap because it can take a reasonable beating and won't die to just Ayaka's burst alone. We'll start off with the Black Cliff Longsword and that will be our baseline for this comparison. We'll be keeping an eye on how much Ayaka's bursts ticks crit for. With no party buffs at all, the Black Cliff Longsword is doing 10,306 damage per burst crit. Fascinating. Let's move on to the Aminoma Kageyuchi. The Aminoma Kageyuchi is doing 10,289 damage per tick. This is essentially a negligible difference between the two swords. Quite an impressive showing for a sword with the additional energy regen utility. And now for the Mist Splitter. We'll be testing it with two stacks and with three stacks. For two stacks, simply cast Ayaka's Burst. We can see that with two stacks it's doing 13,344 damage. Meanwhile, for three stacks, you have to first hit the Geovishap with Ayaka's basic attack. And now it's doing 14,115 damage per tick. And for one last point of data, I also did this with a Refinement 5 Mist Splitter. On the left we can see with 2 stacks it did 15,143 damage, and on the right with 3 stacks we can see it doing 16,686 damage. 
So now that we have this full chart of unbuffed damage, we can see that the two free to play weapons are doing nearly identical damage, at least without any party buffs. Meanwhile, the Mist Splitter at Refinement 1 is doing substantially more damage, 30% with 2 stacks and 37% with 3 stacks. As for the Mist Splitter at Refinement 5, well it's doing up to 62% more damage which is pretty nuts, but honestly that's kind of expected I guess nowadays from a Refinement 5 5 star weapon. Now if you watched my previous Ayaka Guide video, you may remember me mentioning how the Black Cliff performs better, with party buffs due to its crit damage substat, and also due to how common attack buffs are in parties. So let's put that theory to the test. Previously while unbuffed, the Kageyuchi and the Black Cliff were nearly identical. Now with a full party of buffs, the Black Cliff is doing 41,382 damage per tick, versus the Kageyuchi's 37,442 damage. With the full party of buffs, the Kageyuchi is doing 9.5% less damage per tick now. Also, if the environment is conducive for the Black Cliff's passive, this damage gap would further widen. Nonetheless, in the end, both weapons are perfectly usable. I also did this test with the Mist Splitter as well. Let's take a look at how it does with 3 stacks. Fifty-three thousand nine hundred eighty-seven damage at refinement one, and sixty-two thousand three hundred sixty-seven damage at refinement five. That's a pretty big jump in damage. At refinement five with three stacks, this weapon is doing fifty percent more damage than the Black Cliff with a full party of buffs. So nuking the Primo Geo Vishap is cool and all, but what about I guess a more practical situation look like? As such, I also did this in Abyss 12.1. With less team buffs, but more practical team buffs for this specific environment. Let's start off with the Black Cliff vs the Aminoma Kageyuchi. Twenty five thousand two hundred thirty seven damage per tick for the Black Cliff versus twenty three thousand two hundred ninety damage for the Kageuchi. In this situation, what's interesting is both of the weapons' passives are useless. There was no time in this strategy to use the Kageuchi's passive, nor did the kill stacks factor in for the Black Cliff. Also, the difference in damage hardly affected the clear times at all. Regardless, this is still a seven point seven percent reduction in damage for the Kageuchi. And finally, we'll also do this really quick with the Mist Splitter. In this situation, it's impractical to gain 3 stacks on Ayaka's burst. With 2 stacks on each of the examples, we can see that Ayaka gains 23% more damage over the Black Cliff with a Refinement 1 Mist Splitter, and 37% more damage with a Refinement 5 Mist Splitter. So across all these examples, we can see that once team buffs start to come into play, the Kageyuchi's damage slips a bit. But really, it's up to you to decide whether the roughly 5-10% less damage in a team situation is worth it for the additional utility that the Kageyuchi provides. As for my opinion, at Refinement 1, the additional utility that the Kageyuchi provides is pretty small, but if you can get the weapon at Refinement 5, it actually provides a really nice quality of life, especially for the overworld and for domain farming. As for the Mist Splitter, well it's clearly doing much more damage than the other two free to play weapons. Relooking at this chart adjusted with the Black Cliff as the baseline, we can see that a raw elemental damage matches up nicely to the calculations I made earlier. However, with a full party of buffs and stuff, this chart doesn't fully account for that, and that's one lesson I wanted you to take away from this. Weapons with crit damage as a substat, as well as with higher base attack, and finally without the attack percent buff, generally benefit more from party buffs than weapons that happen to have low base attack as well as an attack percent substat. Hopefully this video helped you a bit in terms of deciding what weapon you want to use for Ayaka. In my opinion, the Aminoma Kageyuchi is an amazing weapon due to its overall potential and domain farming potential, especially at Refinement 5. As for the Black Cliff, it is admittingly a better weapon for damage, especially with party buffs, but sometimes 7-10% more damage doesn't really matter much, but other times it actually does matter. Lastly, the Mist Splitter Reforged is a clear winner in terms of damage. What weapon will you be using with Ayaka? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out. Bye.